Hello and welcome on Weekend Sport on Trust TV. I'm Adeni Aji Shafe. It's time to take you around the world of sports as we give you those details uh, in the world of sport. We're talking about what happened during the week and also what will be happening for this weekend. A lot of matches slated for uh, the top leagues in Europe and also in the MPFL and then we'll also be looking at the big one between Anthony Joshua and Jamin Franklin. That fight will be happening tonight. A big one there for Antonio Lufemi Joshua. Will he be getting his group back? Is for him to answer there. Well, let's start with uh, activities that happened during the week where we we'll give you a review of what happened during the week concerning some sporting stories as we start with uh, under 23. Uh, well, they tried their best, but they couldn't qualify. They were defeated by Guinea. Uh, Eagles under 23, Eagles crash out of Olympic race after loss to Guinea. That match was playing Casablanca, Morocco. Uh, that's the second leg, and we lost out in that particular encounter uh, where they lost 2-0. Their first leg ended goalless in Abuja, and under 23 team right now have crashed out from this competition. So we won't be playing at the Olympics, even the AFCON. That's under 23 AFCON. We are also out. Just giving you an update concerning what happened during the week. And now we look at uh, the senior player, the Super Eagles. AFCON 2020 qualifier, Super Eagles. Uh, Super Eagles uh, edge Guinea-Bissau to regain lead in Group A. Good one for them, at least right now. 
they are back to top in that group after they play uh they lost against guinea bissau in abuja they traveled to guinea bissau and they were able to win that game costello musi simon's penalty and right now eagles are back to the top of group a good one there talking about uh, that particular match uh, between nigerian super eagles versus guinea uh bissau there now another story that came up during the week has to do with fifa Indonesia, despite not having good uh, diplomatic tie with Israel, are saying where well, they will not allow Israel to participate or welcome them at the World Cup under 20. But right now, FIFA deeming fit to quickly uh, take that particular hosting right away from Indonesia. Indonesia right now, they will no longer host under 20 World Cup after the call for Israel ban. But right now, what will be happening is the fact that uh, FIFA will move it so the Argentina or Peru. The news have been saying that uh, I guess now we're giving that particular note. We wait to see what will happen there from FIFA. Right now, Indonesia will no longer host 2023 uh, under 20 World Cup. She's talking about the week, March day 11 of the midweek uh, matches of MPF and also NWF was actually played across Nigeria. We look at group A and B of both uh, uh, leagues and right now let's start with the guys uh, talking about the MPFL March day 11 that was played midweek. Uh, ben Day Insurance play 1-1 against Aqua United. Remo Stars won away against El Kaneme Warriors and you have Eimba also sharing the spot against Nasarawa United. Gombe United won, Quara United uh, lost that game. Shooting stars, they won on five goal thriller, 3 2 against Plateau United. Uh, Gumbot is celebrating that particular win there uh, against Plateau United. Still looking at how it went down. Let's look at their table, table of uh, Group A right now as it stands. Bende Insurance at top with 25 points after playing 11 matches, followed by Remo Stars who won away at El Kademi. Uh, Aqua United are standing third with 90 points. And you have Aimba International uh, with uh, 18 points from 11 matches. You have Plateau United, Gombe, Shooting Stars, Quara, Nasarawa, El Kanemi Warriors in that pecking order. How the, uh, those matches that were played during the week, uh, the way the table is standing right now. Well, Bende Insurance will be trying to see how they can add more for the fact that they are yet to lose in this particular bridge league. The Brisbane Plateau United for the weekend fixtures coming up for this weekend. Now, let's look at Group B Resort. Matches were also played. Four games were played there. Abia Warriors defeated Enugu Rangers in the Oriental Derby. The Kada played 1-1 uh, against Bayosa United. Niger Tornadoes against Wiki Torres ended in favor of Niger Tornadoes. Uh, the Equal Ala boys were able to do it there. 2-0 against Wiki Torres of Bauchi. Doma United won. Sunshine Stars won in that particular encounter. But right now, let's look at how the table is also standing after match day. 11 uh, uh, matches were played. Rivers United are still topping there now with 19 points, playing 10 matches. Lobby Stars are trailing them, although they have the same point uh, right now. And you have Abia Warriors, Niger Tornados who won their game. Sunshine Stars, Doma United, Enugu Rangers, Bielsa United, Wiki Tories, and Dakada FC on eight points after playing 11 match day. Minus six goal difference uh, over there in that's a match day 11 uh, midweek matches that were played across Nigeria. Just give me an update concerning the weekend review before we move to uh, looking at activities for this weekend. Now let's talk about the women. Women also played their games uh, during the week. That's on Wednesday across Nigeria. We look at Group A and B and also how the tables are standing. Heartland against Bielsa ended goalless, but uh, almost the three teams are the meeting that uh, they won't be scoring. Royal Queens, new nil against Delta Queens. Oshu Babes, new. Nigeria Tells also play uh, new. They all share the spoil there. One, one point apiece, uh, they, actually, they took home. Now, the way the results, uh, the table is standing in Group A shows that uh, all the teams are leading, are really battle ready to make sure they lead this particular group. Delta Queens are leading with 21 points. They added one more point there. Bielsa Queens, Nigeria Tales of Abuja standing tall with 14 points. Rivers Angels, Heartland Queens, Royal Queens, and Oshu Babes of Oshubo are down the log with seven points from 10 matches with minus nine goal difference. In Group B, matches were played. They had uh, two wins in that particular group. Let's look at Group B result, and then we look at also how their table is standing. Nasarawa Amazons won away by a long goal against Ibom Angels. Y Conference Queens also shared this point against Adamawa Queens. Edo Queens, they scored two goals at Samuguna Stadium to win that game there. FC Robo Queens lost that game uh, to Edo Queens. Right now, the table shows that Edo Queens are really edging home in Group B. 
uh, looking at how it sees in Group B right now. Well, they have 18 points uh, uh, after playing their own uh, match day 11. You have uh, Confluence Queen standing second, Nasarawa Amazon, FC Robo Queen of Lagos, uh, they are fourth on the law with 16 points. Abia Angels, 13, Adamawa Queens, 10, Ebom Angels, they have six uh, points in that particular uh, group. Well, uh, from the way it is, Edo Queens, Confluence Queens, and Nasarawa Amazons are topping in this particular group B. Just giving you updates concerning the midweek matches play both league for women and men uh, in Nigeria. MPFL match day 11 also, NWFL Nigeria Women Football League match day 11 that was also played across uh, Nigeria. Well, uh, right the survival struggle against uh, Guinea-Bissau, yet their valuation still remain top in Africa. And right now, they are actually standing 15th in the world. Let's look at the, uh, the value, that is the valuation of Super Eagles. Looking at that story, Super Eagles rated most expensive team in Africa. 13th in the world, rather, in by transfer market. Well, transfer market actually value almost all the teams in the world during the international break. And right now, Super Eagles are rated most expensive team in Africa. Uh, looking at how the uh, is actually stand. Let's look at uh, the lineup of uh, the transfer market Super Eagles valuation before we look at Africa and the world. Nigeria with a total value of 338.50 million euros. The place 15 with a market value of 301 million euro in February, and right now they are actually worth 338.50 million. And you have Super Eagles value witness an increase of 37.5 compared to the squad's previous value. Osime is now between 70 to 100 million euro, being Nigeria's most valuable player ever. Wilfred Indidi remains uh, right now second with 38 million euro uh, compared to his previous value of 60 million euro. Ademola Lukman stands between 20 to 30 million following his impressive debut season with his Italian club, club Atalanta. Alex Iwobi maintains 25 million valuation to remain as Igu's fourth most expensive player. Chukweze, uh, market value remains 20 million euro. Emmanuel Dennis is at 10 million. And you have Terry Murphy. Joe Aribo and Calvin Bassi with a combined value of 72 million euro. Goalkeeper Maduka Koe at 2.5 million continues to see his value increase despite little action since joining Watford. Let's look at Africa and the rest of the world uh, concerning the valuation there. You look at Nigeria with a total of uh, uh, 30, uh, 38.50, were placed 15 with a market value of 301 in February. Uh, now, Super Eagles have witnessed an increase, actually witnessed an increase of 37.5 million compared to the squad's previous value. Prior to the latest rankings, Morocco, who were once the third most valuable African team, are now second in Africa and 14th in the world with a team value of 306.85 million following their impressive outing in Qatar. Cote d'Ivoire are third in Africa and 22nd globally with a market value of 251.03, while Ghana are fourth on the continent and 24th in the world. Senegal, who were once ranked number one in Africa, are now the fifth most valued African team and 27th in the world. England retained their position as the most financially viable team in the world with a market value of 1.11 billion euro compared to their previous 1.28 billion euro. And while European champions Italy draw further from sixth position to seven, France moved on one place to so second position, 1.03 billion euro, while Portugal, 9.13 million euro. You have Argentina and Spain complete the top five in the world. Just giving you update concerning how those teams are now being rated worldwide. Good one, at least Super Eagles, despite the fact that they are a bit uh, struggling, but they are, the valuation on their head still uh, very, very valuable. Good one for the likes of Victor Osime right now being valued at 70 to 100 million uh, euro. Uh, while we look at those uh, stories for you to let you have a feel of what happened during the week, just picking those stories for you uh, to review it. And right now we go on a short break. By the time we return, we give you much more in the world of sports.
Good morning, there. Nigel Nados versus Wiki Torres of Bachi. Just giving you uh, concerning our own football there. MPFL as it happened uh, there. Well, quickly, we talk about the big one for the weekend. Matches will be coming up. But before we talk about matches, we look at uh, boxing. Anthony Joshua will be trying to see how he can get his career back to the mainframe right now. But the fact that he lost back to back to Alexander Yusik of Ukraine, and he will be fighting tonight against German Franklin, the American who uh, is called 989 Assassin, against AJ, as his fun lay call. Uh, that particular bout will be coming up tonight. A big one there for Anthony Joshua. Will he be able to rescue his career and get back to uh, challenging for the heavyweight uh, belt? Uh, this is just, say, uh, a common fight for between him and Jamin Franklin. We'll be able to do it at the O2 Arena in London. That's the place he'll be fighting since 2016. Uh, he hasn't been able to get back there, but right now uh, he wants to get his act together against uh, Jamin Franklin at O2 Arena. Let's look at uh, the uh, career summary of both. We start with Jamin Franklin, an American at the age of 29. Let's look at his own uh, 29 American heavyweight boxer from Saginaw, Michigan, nicknamed 989 Assassin. Jamin Franklin is 6.2. That's uh, 6.2 feet tall with a reach of 196 centimeters. He fights out of the octodot stance and presents an ape index of 8 centimeters. Franklin has a 63.6% knockout rate. Jamin Franklin made his professional boxing debut against Deshaun Jenkins at the year of 21 on April 4, 2015, defeating Jenkins via four strand uh, technical knockout. He went on to win 20 more consecutive fights after the debut, which included 13 wins via stoppage. His most recent fight was a non title bout against British boxer Dillian White on November 26, 2022. Franklin lost the fight controversially via 12th round unanimous decision. It's been four months and four days since this fight. Franklin's professional boxing record is currently at 21-1, which includes 14 knockout wins. He's on a one-fight losing streak. That's uh, 989 Assassin, Jamin Franklin, that will be facing Anthony Joshua there. He has only lost once in 22 fights. He won 21, and right now he will be facing Anthony Joshua, 33. Let's look at Anthony Joshua's uh, uh, career summary there. Uh, he's 33 years, and uh, he's a British heavyweight boxer from Watford, Hertfordshire, England. Nicknamed AJ, Anthony Joshua is 6 feet 6 inches tall with a reach of 208 centimeters. He fights out of the octodot stands also, a late starter in the sport. Joshua began boxing in 2007, age 18, when his cousin suggested he take it up. A two-time former unified world heavyweight champion, having held the uh, WBA Super, IBF, WBO and IBO titles twice between 2016 and 2021. 
At regional level, Joshua held the British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles from 2015 to 2016. Total five, 27, uh, wins 24, uh, while wins uh, by knockout 22. Lose, uh, he actually lost out three times. Uh, he lost twice to Alexander Yuzik and once to Andy Ruiz Jr. Uh, in the fight that he actually came back to win the second time when they had a rematch. Uh, looking at that particular fight that will be happening at O2 Arena tonight, a big one there. Uh, where they will be facing themselves. Well, this particular fight will give Anthony Joshua the chance. If he's able to win this bout, he will be getting the opportunity to challenge for the belt. Those belts mostly are with uh, Alexander Yusi, the Ukrainian, and one is with Tyson Fury, another Briton. Uh, from the way it is, a big one for Anthony Joshua. The younger uh, boxer, uh, that's uh, Jamin Franklin, is about to ready say he wants to knock out Joshua in England. And Joshua is saying, well, he's actually digging his grave during the way in of both. Joshua is actually way heavier uh, than Jamin uh, Franklin in this particular fight. For the first time in his career, this is the heaviest he has ever been. Talking about AJ and for Jamin Franklin, this is his lightest uh, time uh, when it comes to weighing in. The fight will be coming up and we hope that uh, <laughs> let the best man win. But really, Nigerians would love to see Anthony Joshua winning this particular fight because it's been a while. He's been knocked out twice, or rather defeated twice by Alexander Yusik. The first one was outright for Yusik, but the second one, a bit questionable for a lot of boxer, boxing lovers out across the world, although the decision of the judges stand. Well, both will be facing themselves tonight, who wins that particular battle. We'll be looking at it uh, together later on uh, in the course of the show, where you have the chance to call it, but not yet uh, time for that. Let's quickly look at uh, uh, matches to be coming up. But before we talk about matches, let's look at NBA. Yes, games were earlier played today in the NBA. We look at uh, those results. A uh, good one for Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis was able to score 38 points uh, for his uh, team. Los Angeles Lakers there, he was able to get 38 points, 17, 17 rebounds, two blocks. Uh, for his club. Good one. As Lakers beat uh, Minnesota Timber was 123 to 111. Let's look at the result of those games that were played earlier today in the NBA as it went down. Well, Chicago Bulls defeated Charlotte Hornet 121 to 91. Toronto Raptors, they lost by seven points against Philadelphia 76ers. Utah Jazz 114 against Boston Celtics, who won that game 122 to 114. New York Knicks defeated Cleveland Cavaliers by 130 to 116. You have Atlanta Hawks. Uh, they lost that game against Brooklyn Nets, 124 to 107. Detroit Pistons lost against Houston Rockets. Memphis Grizzlies uh, defeated LA Clippers, 108 to 94. As Elia said, Los Angeles Lakers defeated Minnesota Timberwolves there, 133 to 111, where Anthony Davis scored 38 points. San Antonio Sports 115, half off uh, to get to the reach of uh, Golden State Warriors there. So, uh, Stephen Curry, well, good one for that particular team. Phoenix Suns 100 against Denver Nuggets, who scored 93 by seven point deficit. They were so. Phoenix Suns. Now let's look at the standings, uh, the NBA standings, both North and uh, rather Western and Eastern Conference. Nuggets are topping there after winning uh, most of the games there, 51 to 26. And you look at Grizzlies also, they are second on the log, followed by uh, Sacramento Kings, Phoenix Suns, Clippers, uh, Golden State Warriors are standing six. Los Angeles Lakers, you have them on seven position there. Well, you have Pelicans, uh, uh, Timberwolves are standing ninth. Uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, you have the Dallas Mavericks, Utah Jazz, Blazers, uh, San Antonio Sports are standing 14. Why? Houston Rocket uh, right now standing 15 on the log. Well, let's look at the Eastern Conference now. Eastern Conference, you look at the top <laughs> the top team there. That's uh, Milwaukee Bucks, led by Giannis at home. For they are really doing well. Top it that uh, Eastern Conference. You look at Celtic, Boston Celtic are also at, uh, second on the log. Philadelphia 76ers, uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, you have uh, New York Knicks standing fifth, uh, Brooklyn Nets, Miami Heat in that order, and you have Atlanta Hawks, Toronto Raptors, Chicago Bulls, Wizards, Indiana Pacers, Orlando Magic, and Charlotte Hornet, and you have Destro Detroit Pistons standing 15 on the log there. Well, those two, they just, uh, uh, at least they know that they will no longer make the playoffs right now because uh, they just couldn't meet up. I'm talking about the likes of Detroit Pistons. Just give you an update concerning the NBA, the slam and dunk sport of basketball there. Right now, we quickly move to talk about our own. We leave basketball and come back to Nigeria. Let's talk about the 
NNL matches will be played over the weekend. Although, before we give you that, Marlon Fashi defeated Kano Pillars by a long goal. Good one for Marlon Fashi FC. Although, um, three matches have been played. Kano, they won two out of three. They lost one right now. Let's look at the games for the weekend in Northern Conference and also in the Sandar Conference. In Group A1, ABS of Iloran uh, play, uh, playing against Kogi United. Uh, it's going to be North Central Derby there. Milan Takiki FC against EFCC. Big one. A Derby also. Mighty Jet versus Iboss. That will be coming up in Jaws. Uh, look at Group A2 uh, in the uh, March Day 3 of the Northern Conference. Green Berets hosted City FC of Abuja. Nath FC will be playing against Katsina United. FWC champions away to Jigawa Golden Stars in the Group A2 Northern Conference. In Group a3 on that conference let's look at how it is just a match will be coming up there can be united against zamfara united big one there uh, now let's look at uh, group a4 in the northern conference matches will be coming up uh, rather a match adamawa united versus yube desert stars uh, in another battle there uh, between yube and adamawa united uh, teams uh, we we'll quickly move straight to Southern Conference now, as uh, matches will be coming up in Group B1, B2, and uh, B3, alongside B4. Go Round FC against Ensad will be coming up. You have one Rocket versus Rovers. Van Dressa away to Warrior Wolves. And you look at uh, B2 now, as we have uh, fixtures for you in Group B2. Uh, games will be coming up there. And you look at Crown FC, Joy Comet, Smart City FC, Ijebu United, Sporting Lagos. They are away to Gateway United in Abelkota, those games coming up in Group B2 and right now Group B3 and 4 respectively. Let's look at those games that will be coming up there. Madiba FC, Abelkota Stormers, uh, they will be uh, at least facing themselves while Ekiti United with uh, locking horns against FC Ebede in the Southern Conference, uh, Group B3. In Group B4, Abia Comets will uh, be hosting Edel FC. Ibom Youth, they will be fighting against Giant Brailers FC, while Heartland FC travel away to Sinusos FC uh, in those encounters that will be happening live in the NLL, the second tier of Nigerian Football League. Uh, good one for all the teams that will be playing this weekend. Uh, that's March Day 3 in the Nigerian National League. NLO will also be coming up. and will be giving you much more concerning that as those matches uh, come up. Well, right now, we look at the MPFL. They'll be going right now on March Day 12 after the likes of Bande Insurance will be at least trying to see how they can sustain their, uh, at least, uh, their winning streak. They are yet to lose this in this season so far in their bridge league. They also want to add to that. Well, let's see what they'll be doing against Plateau United because Plateau United coach Fidelis in the truth is already talking tough that they would defeat Bende Insurance. Let's look at Group A, uh, that's uh, Group A and Group B in the March Day 12 fixtures in the Nigerian Pro, uh, Premier Football League. Big one there, matches in the MPFL for this weekend. Well, in their match day 12, uh, they'll be battling to see who stays on. Their Brick League is still really very, very tough right now. It's a marathon. And right now, they have eight more, at least uh, <laughs> uh, six more matches after this weekend. And let's see who wins and who stays top uh, where before the Super 6 fight will be coming up. The winner will be going home with 100 million and they'll be fighting there. Well, for the women, it's also showcased their uh, table there. Right now, Edo Queens. Are topping their group while Delta are also leading in group A, uh, trying to see how they can better their law to see how they can also stand to fight for the super uh, games there. Well, giving you updates concerning those ones, let's talk about Rivers United. Rivers United, right now, as we speak, they are in Cote d'Ivoire uh, to play against Asset Mimosas. 
Uh, they, tr they actually did well uh, by winning well right now. Uh, if you look at their group, they are actually start stopping there, even though they have the same point with Asek Mimosa. Uh, they have uh, 10 point. Mimosa also, they are trailing. But some goal difference, uh, they have uh, plus three. You have uh, Asek Mimosa, they have plus one. At least uh, just uh, uh, the match uh, to the, this weekend will be the one to determine this. Who will stay on top? But for Rivers United, they've been able to scale through to the quarterfinals of uh, CAF Confederation. Congrats to them and a win today, or they will, that will give them the chance to at least do well. Uh, talking about Rivers United, who are right now trying to, try to see how they can at least uh, continue to be in this particular uh, group, uh, rather, competition, the second tier of CAF Interclub competition. They are in a CAF confederation, and right now we are hoping that they will do well uh, in this uh, particular CAF uh, Interclub competition. Although that's the only team left, uh, other teams are out. Uh, from this uh, competition right now. Now we move away from that uh, story that has to do with Rivers United. We're going on a break. By the time we come back, we'll be giving you those uh, stories that has to do with uh, EPL, La Liga, and Saka, Bukayo Saka, winning the Premier League Player of the Month. More of that will be coming after this timeout. A goal there for City FC of Abuja against Jigawa Goal this start in their second, uh, that's match day two of the Nigerian National League. Just to give you that particular uh, clip for you to have a feel of our own league. Well, we've been giving you uh, updates concerning matches for this weekend. The game will be up in the NPF and also in the NNL. And earlier on, we talked about Anthony Joshua fighting against Jamin Franklin at uh, the O2 Arena tonight. A big one for Anthony Joshua's career. And very earlier, I talked about uh, uh, the Super Eagles being ranked among the, uh, the most valued teams across the world. And you also look at the Under-23 crashing out from the uh, Under-23 AFCON and also the Olympic uh, race there. Well, for Super Eagles, they are still in the race. They are back to the top of their group after they, out, they defeated Guinea-Bissau away. Go by a long goal score by Moses Simon. Just give me a recap of all that we've taken so far. Not forgetting the NBA, Anthony Davis scoring 38 points for his club. Uh, talking about Los Angeles Lakers there. Well, for the likes of Milwaukee Bucks, they are really doing well leading their pack in the Eastern Conference. Now we move to talking about those inter international football. We start with uh, Bukayo Saka winning for the first time in his career. Uh, Premier League player of the month for the month of March uh, right now. Bukayo Saka, the Arsenal player, has actually been able to win that. And uh, really, a good one for him, at least uh, being able to break the jeans there, at least making it for the Gunners uh, for a while now. It has been between Liverpool, Manchester City players, and also coaches doing it. But now it's coming to Arsenal. Uh, still talking about the player of the month, we have uh, Mikel Ateta. 
he won the uh, manager of the month also uh, making it the fourth time he will be winning it joining the likes of uh, Pep Guardiola and Jorgen Klopp uh, to also uh, get this done. Good one for Mikel Ateta, manager of the month for the month of March, uh, alongside his uh, player, uh, that's uh, Bukayo Saka, also win Aaron Ramsdale. Yes, he also get the, uh, the, that's the glove of the month. Good one for Aaron Ramsdale, he was able to win it, and right now you have to celebrate him uh, for the fact that he's all uh, Arsenal <laughs> to win. They won the player of the month, the uh, coach of the month, and also not forgetting the save of the month. Well, good one for Aaron Ramsdale uh, for the save of the month, Bukayo Saka for the player of the month, and the manager of the month, Mikel Ateta, joining Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp among the top managers that have won it for four or five times. Just giving you an update concerning that. Uh, while we, before we start with the uh, fixtures, uh, the Premier League uh, bottom nine is a big battle right now. As, uh, <laughs> uh, but the way it is, all the top, uh, bottom nine will have to fight hard. They need to fight hard because it's very, very dicey. Looking at uh, Premier League bottom nine there, uh, before we look at uh, the fixtures for the weekend in the Premier League, we look at all the teams bottom of the table. They are really very, very close. Very, very close uh, in that uh, uh, EPL fight for survivor. You look at it, uh, uh, Southampton are down the lock table there. West Ham, you look at West Ham, Bournemouth, them out. Uh, Leicester City, Nottingham Forest, Everton, Leeds United. You look at Watford and you look at Crystal Palace. Uh, between Southampton to, uh, or rather from Crystal Palace to Southampton, 27 to 23, just four points among, uh, between the clubs from 12 to 20. That shows that it's very, very tight for the race to survive uh, this particular league for this season. Between all these team clubs, now the eight of them will have to fight hard. They have to really work hard to get the, uh, the not to get away from relegation zone. Crystal Palace, Watford, Leeds United, all fighting hard. Uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers, I beg your pardon, Wolverhampton Wanderers are uh, all fighting hard to see how they can at least sustain themselves there in the EPL. Well, a big one there. Well, <laughs> David Moyes, uh, you got Leicester, uh, Brenda Rogers, all of them are hope and just working hard to see how they can remain there. For Southampton, Nigerians are there, Juaribo, Onuachu, they are there in that club. Everton, you have Iwobi, you have Nottingham Forest, Manuel Dennis, and Awoni, all these Nigerian players uh, in these clubs. And they'll be hoping that this uh, actually will be able to stand for next season. While we right now go straight to look at the matches slated for this weekend in the EPL, the big one, Manchester City against Liverpool will be coming up the first match for the weekend. A big one there between the two teams at uh, ETR Stadium who win that battle between Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola. We give you those matches alongside La Liga, not forgetting German Bundesliga and also Italian Serie A go straight down to French League. But first of all, let's look at uh, Premier League. Uh, for matches for this weekend.
matches slated for this weekend there. The big one happening between Manchester City versus Liverpool. <laughs> uh, a big one between Guardiola and, and uh, Jogging Club who win this particular fight there. We'll be looking at uh, these matches. Over there in Italy, you have uh, Napoli against AC Milan. Another big one. The news have it that uh, Osime might not be playing for the fact that he actually got uh, some knocks there. And over there in German Bundesliga, the biggest match be between Bayern, Mani versus Borussia Dortmund in the race for the uh, the teams uh, leading there. We're talking about the German Bundesliga, a big match between Dortmund and Bayern. And right now, you also look at French League 1. PSG will be playing against uh, French, uh, that's uh, Olympic Lyon in the French uh, League, match day 29 fixtures. Big one for the likes of uh, Mbappe, Messi, Neyman against Lyon, who wins that particular one there over there in French League. On big one for this weekend, big matches there, and uh, we'll be looking at all together. But uh, right now, let's start with that particular uh, time where you can call in to also contribute to your own quota on the show. We talk about uh, two stories now, although you can still look at Napoli, a similar or smell be playing. Bayern, Dortmund, and uh, PSG versus uh, uh, Lyon. But we're looking at Manchester City versus Liverpool. Anthony Joshua versus German Franklin. That's boxing, two in one. Uh, if you like boxing, even if you don't like boxing, I'm sure you know about Anthony Lufemi Joshua. will be fighting tonight. Can he win this fight? We need your contribution there to let us see how you actually following the sports show, really. Anthony Joshua will be hoping to get his career back on track as he will be filing out against uh, Jermaine Franklin at the O2 Arena. Manchester City will also be playing against Liverpool in the first match for this weekend, match day 29. A big one there, although uh, both teams are equally tasked. Let's see who wins this one between the two. You can call in and make your own contribution while we're waiting for the calls. I will quickly look at the fact that Napoli uh, will be facing AC Milan. Okay, we have a caller there. Hello, where are you calling from? And uh, have a, at least a happy new month. Hello, good morning. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, my brother. Yeah, good to have you. That should be Mohammed, right? Yes, I'm the one. I'm the one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> good to have you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not exciting creature in the sports world, the sporting world this weekend. Mm. Yes, I, w I want to start with the Man City Liverpool game. You, got, you want to do what? I want to start with the Man City Liverpool game. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, Man City. I'm giving it to Man City. Mm. But you cannot, you, can, you, can, you cannot fight over Liverpool. Okay, why do you pick Man City to win against Liverpool? Because they need them much more than Liverpool. Okay, because of the closeness to Arsenal, five points between them? Yeah. Yes, they need them much more than Liverpool. Okay, but don't you think Liverpool will be hoping that, yes, if they win, they will also close the gap? Yes, but Liverpool, look at this Liverpool now, they are very inconsistent when it comes to performance. Inconsistency against Liverpool. Now, let me just uh, drift a bit. Uh, while we are talking about that, I'm sure you have talked about Anthony uh, uh, Joshua versus Jermaine Franklin. Do you see him winning tonight? Yes, yeah, I'm seeing, I'm giving AJ. AJ should win. Yeah, okay, Napoli, AC Milan, although AC Milan might not play, it's possible because we had that with, because of with, Knox. With, with or without AC Milan, I'm giving it to Napoli. Well, with or without. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving it to Napoli. Two more, ba uh, Bayern Munich versus Borussia Dortmund. How many of the German, if being alone, the have been informed like they are in this, this, is, this, this season so far. Mm. But the problem, my problem is that you cannot put your money on them. They are very inconsistent when it comes to playing Bayern Munich. Okay, so you are so afraid to... <laughs> yes, I'm giving it to Bayern Munich. PSG Lyon. PSG. PSG, I'm giving it to PSG. PSG. And yeah, finally, they are playing at one. Uh, before you go, I know you are a Plateau United fan. Plateau United versus yeah. Bender Insurance. Bender Insurance. <laughs> you know, that, that season, I, was tell, I was telling my friend this morning that mm. that season, you know, we are expecting to break on Liverpool uh, Liverpool that unbeaten. Okay, so you are saying Plateau United will break that unbeaten of Bender Insurance? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, we did, uh, as we did it to Liverpool United last season. Mm. But we have to be very consistent and we have very clear in front. Okay, so uh, if if you, you know, if you, you guys are able to win, that's Plateau United. Okay, next week is there. We talk about it, <laughs> Mohammed. Thank you.
Thank you so much for calling from Joss Plateau State. Mohamed joining us there, giving us his own contribution concerning the match Manchester City versus Liverpool. He's saying uh, Man City will win because they are more consistent than Liverpool. And also he's picking PSG, picking Bayern, and standing with uh, Anthony Joshua to win that boxing bout against German Franklin tonight. We can still join us. At least you can take uh, two or three more calls before we wrap it up. Talking about... Uh, 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 well, another caller there. Good to have you on the show. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you. Where are you calling from, please? And your name? Another Mohammed is calling you from Adama State. Another Mohammed. <laughs> Where in Adama? <laughs> I'm calling you from um, from Jimeta. Jimeta. Okay, good one. Uh, how is Jimeta this hour? Uh, we find out. Uh, okay, go ahead. Let's have your views right now. You know, we're Ascension State. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. So what's happening? Anthony uh, Joshua, Jamin Franklin. Um, frankly speaking, um, we expect uh, Anthony Joshua to bounce back this time around. And then um, I, he's, he's going his way, inshallah. Mm. Okay, you believe he will win. Now, let's talk football away from boxing. Now, since you said, Joshua, you are expecting him to win. Man City, Liverpool. Um, it's a tough match. Uh, because if you, if you find out recently now, Liverpool are able to put their heads together. So it's honestly, it's going to be a tough match. The highest match you can get for Liverpool is, should be a draw. A draw? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, another big one before we go. You are calling from Adamawa. Do you follow Adamawa United? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, our problem, our problem with our politicians, they don't allow the right thing to be done, you understand? Um, okay, so that's, that's why you don't follow your club. Uh, no, I follow them, but you know, sometimes when you put politics into the whole thing, you don't get the right players to, to play for the team, you don't get the right coaches to do the right thing, and it's unfortunate, honestly. Okay, good one, Mohammed from Jimeta Adamawa. We appreciate your call there. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, so, one more call before we go straight to transfer gossip. I'm still expecting contribution right now. Anthony Joshua is playing against, uh, fighting rather, against uh, Jamie Franklin, while Liverpool tackle against uh, uh, Manchester City at the ETH Stadium. A big one there. Big matches for the weekend in the NNL, MPFL, not forgetting the top five league in Europe. We have a call up there. That should be the last call on the, on the show. Good to have you on the show. Hello, are you there? Yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah, good to have you. Your name and where are you calling from? My name is Lazarus Daniel. I'm calling from Sandra Local Government of Kaduna State. Okay, Daniel from Kaduna State. Let's have you, your view concerning Anthony Joshua fight. I'm giving it to AJ. Hmm. I just hope that all this giving will favor AJ. Yes, sir, because I love AJ. He's a black as I am. Hmm. Okay, Man yeah. City, Liverpool. Man City, Liverpool, and giving it to Liverpool because I don't want Man City to return the title again. <laughs> Are you an Arsenal fan? I'm a Chelsea fan. Oh my goodness. Okay, you don't want Man City to win because. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Okay, anyway. So, uh, right now, I want to appreciate you for calling from Kaduna. Uh, that's Daniel. Thank you so much. Well, before we wrap it up, just to let you know, Man City against Liverpool, a big one there. PSG Lyon, Bayern Dortmund, and not forgetting Napoli versus AC Milan. AJ will be fighting tonight against Jermaine Franklin. Nigerians are hoping that their own cool and collected AJ will win that fight. And before we go, let's look at some transfer gossip where Chelsea have emerged as a major contenders for Napoli's Nigerian striker, Victor Osime. Osime really uh, is generating a lot of interest right now when it comes to uh, the striker, they want to get him over there in Chelsea. They are really working out to get Osime. And right now, Chelsea have uh, emerged as major contender for Victor Osime's signature in the summer. Well, we look at another one, uh, England player, defender, Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw has agreed uh, in the section, yes, a uh, four-year contract with Manchester United. I'm sure a lot of my United fans will be happy there. Luke Shaw has really been able to get his group back, and he has agreed a new four-year contract with Manchester United. Well, before we go, let's talk about Tottenham Hotspur. The chairman, Danny Levy, has no intention, has no intention of selling to Manchester clubs again as he still regrets selling Kyle Walker 
to Manchester City in 2017. Talking about Tottenham All Sports chairman there, Daniel Levis. He doesn't want to sell to Man City and also Manchester United for the fact that he regrets selling Kylie Walker to Manchester City in 2017. Well, that's it. We're giving you an update concerning uh, sporting activities for this weekend in NPFL, NNL, EPL, La Liga, not forgetting German Bundesliga, French League 1, and also Italian City. Ah, for Anthony Joshua, Nigerians have spoken. They support him and hoping that he will win that fight to get his career back on track against Jamin Franklin. Wishing him the best and also wishing you a happy new month there. Well, have a splendid weekend. I leave you with this. I'm Adeni Ajushafe. Thanks for watching.